team, Schlegel loses the puck. Here's an opportunity and a big save. Goes on in quickly. Lindros. Oh, he stepped into Jacobson and really sent him flying. Brings it back for Canada. Lead pass for Juno. Juno trying to work and score! Trailing on the play, in for Bruce, he shoots, save, rebound, they score! After two weeks of worrying and celebrating, the waiting is finally over. It's decision day at the Ice Arena in Maribel as Team Canada confronts the unified team. Welcome back to the ice rink in Maribel, Canada, and the unified team for the Olympic gold medal. And we have talked, Jim, about the pressure on the Canadian team, but in the other dressing room prior to the game, I think there may have been some butterflies and some pressure as well. Well, you're absolutely right. Canada playing for a country, the unified team, after a tremendous amount of political upheaval, have done an unbelievable job in dominating the tournament so far. They've got a big job to complete what they set out to do. And Viktor Tikhanov, obviously, going through a lot of different turmoil himself, has the same job to do. Dave King, the head coach of Team Canada, who made the comment that it was his dream to coach in the Olympic Games. And now he is hours away from what could be a very special, special moment. The consensus among most hockey people is that Sean Burke may have to have the game of his life for Canada to win the gold medal. Well, the unified team in seven games they have played so far, four of those games they've had over 50 shots on opposing goaltenders, not just simple dribblers from outside the blue line, but generally great scoring opportunities after a couple of precise passes so you're absolutely right Burke has to be at the top of his game and all the rest of the guys in white have to be the overachievers that we've seen so often during these Olympic Games. Sven Erik Sold of Sweden the referee the game is underway Schlegel has it in his own zone over to Jason Woolley Jason Woolley lead pass intended for Brost it's an icing call against Canada. You don't see the same types of games that coaches play at the Olympics. Viktor Tikhanov sends a lineup around with the opposition's lineup, and it is always the exact lines that he follows. On the other hand, Dave King mixes his lines up a little bit, hoping to get a slight advantage if the opposition is looking to match lines. One of the things that Dave King instructed his players on before taking to the ice, when you get the puck, make good plays. The unified team likes to control the puck. The opposition in most of the games has not had it that often. Woolley gets it out to center, had some problems there. Knocked away from him by Homutov. It's loose in the neutral zone. Bikoff plays it back to the line to Kasparaitis. For Homutov, he is checked. Jason Woolley gains control in his own zone. He throws it rink wide to the captain of the Canadian team, Brad Schlegel. Up on the wing for Hannon. Hannon chops it out to center ice. The Soviets can't go anywhere with it, and Schlegel takes over for Canada. Back to Jason Woolley. He's being watched by Bikov. Ahead for Bros. Bros tried to flip it high. It bounced off. Homutov picked up again by Bros. He starts away. He has Hannon with him. Bros dumps it to the corner. Hannon and Bros go to the bench for a change. Juno in for checking. 
Lindbergh comes on the ice. Smith is out there as well. The puck comes up to center ice to Davidoff. Davidoff leaves it there for Kovalenko. Kovalenko has Smith on top of him, and as they bring it in, it is an offside call against the unified team. You talked about puck control. Don, you're so correct, and that stems right from face-offs on out. The Canadian team has been very, very effective on face-offs, winning almost 60%. And in a game like this, the ability to win faceoff becomes even more important. It simply means that you get possession a little bit more often than your opponent. And if your opponent happens to be the unified team, you want to keep the puck away from them a little bit more than you ordinarily do. Kurt Giles, who played so strongly back in the blue line in the victory over Czechoslovakia and got what proved to be the game-winning goal, gives it to Lindbergh, cross-ice pass, and Juno couldn't get a shot away. Kravchuk in the preliminary round scored two goals including the winner against Canada a pass ahead to Davidoff that's a two-line pass of Jenny Davidoff getting switched from lines he played a few games with Bikov and is now with Butsayev hoping to generate a little bit more offense with Kovalenko and Butsayev team a tremendous amount of training if you ever wonder why their skills are what they are it's simply the amount of time particularly practice time in the neighborhood of 1300 to 1500 of hours alone on the ice that's not games that's not under conditioning simply practice Hines shoots it towards the net Lindros goes to the corner he's out there with Archibald Lindros trying to move out from the corner attempted to throw it in front of the net he was checked the puck loose at the side of the goal whipped around the boards by the unified team lead pass intercepted by Hines he flips it back into the unified team zone Navikov skates away from Lindros as he moves up to the blue line to Boroshevsky Boroshevsky a very quick shifty individual a shot for the far corner glove that held by Sean Burke. Eric Lindros with a big hit on Malakoff down at the other end of the rink you'll notice the big defenseman Malakoff plays with the little guy Boroshevsky because the centerman does a lot of work in the unified team defensive zone a guy like Boroshevsky needs a big defenseman to help out Boroshevsky and Hines had something going back to the net after the save by Sean Burke. The linesman stepped between them. One thing Dave King also stated is that his team would have to get some breaks from the officials. Well, I would have to agree with that. Canada is going to want to get in front of the unified team as often as possible, slow them down and play a physical game. And every once in a while, if you get somebody that wants to call everything, that can be harmful to you. Petrenko back to the net. He has Woolley on him along the boards. LeBeau trying to help out and clear the zone. It's blocked initially. It comes loose again. And this time, it's flipped out by Fabian Joseph. He scored the fourth goal, the clinching goal in that 4-2 triumph over Czechoslovakia. Back to the net. It's picked up by Jason Woolley. Woolley throws it rink wide. Fabian Joseph drives it to the corner. Kovalev tried to clear, kept in by Manderville. Manderville dumps it back to the goal. Whipped around the boards by Kovalenko. Dahl manages to keep it in, but now Hamilev gains control. He pushes it ahead to Jamnok. Jamnok lets the shot go right on, and Sean Burke in the early stages of the game looks sharp. That's a great sign for Canada. Burke has been very, very strong. And if he continues to improve as the game goes on, it increases Canada's chances of claiming the gold medal. 3.14 gone by in the period. Hobotov trying to work it. He shoots up high at Sean Burke. Hobotov trying to center. Back of the net. Amayalev is checked by Plavsic. Dave Tippett picks up the puck, slides it ahead to Broke. Broke gives it to Hannah. Hannah going for the net. Fakes the shot. Puts on the brakes. Looks back to the point. Leaves it there. Plavsic moving in. Plavsic out front, Tippett shoots, saved by Stalinkov. Canada wants to get Stalinkov in the net in the games he's played so far. He's only faced 18 shots a game. The game plan is to see if Stalinkov can play, and Tippett, Hannon, and Bros doing a good job in starting to get him involved in the game. Kravchuk works his way to the blue line, falls. It's fired out of the zone by Schlegel. 
4.07 gone by in the opening period. It's scoreless in this gold medal game. Crabtree, lead pass up into the center ice area, broken up by Jason Woolley. Woolley gets it again, and his shot right on. Stelenkov leaves it back of the net. Lindbergh was on top of him quickly. Now Smith bumps into his man as Butsayev comes in across the blue line. He's checked. The puck knocked back to center. Dumped in by Kravchuk. Burke lets it go in the corner. Davidoff trying to center. He's checked. The puck knocked back to center ice. Dave King also stressed an emphasis on checking skills for this game against the unified squad. There's been a real trend in who scores first and who has been victorious. The unified team has not had a game yet where they haven't scored first. And the only game in which Canada has not scored first has been against the unified team in a 5-4 loss. Boulder for Boroshevsky. Prokhorov driving for the net. The puck back to the point to Zubov. He couldn't do anything with it. And now it's knocked out the center ice by Gall, who has lost a stick. Lindros checks his man. Lindros going in. Archibald going for the net. Puck was just behind him. Lindros tried to hit Archibald coming in late. The puck was just back of him. Here's an opportunity for Prokhorov. He holds. Throws it in front and it's knocked to the corner by Lindros. John Burke came across with Prokhorov, who got himself in a little too deep. I'll tell you what, Don, two guys have come to play. Sean Burke has been great so far. And the big guy, number 88, already delivering a couple of body checks, coming back hard into his own end. He got a great supporting cast as well. Joseph takes the shot, the rebound, and Stalenkov makes the save as the net comes off its supports. 6-0-3 into the period. Moranov throws it around the boards for Homutov ahead to Bikov. He deflects it down the ice. Brad Schlegel leaves it there for Hines along the boards for Tippett. He can't get out. Homutov looking out front. Amilet was covered. Bikov redirected. The net is off of support. Bikov thought he had a goal. Sean Burke came up with the puck. Team has got a tremendous number of very, very skilled players. And you need a break every once in a while to beat a team like this. Canada just got their first break. This one hit the post, hit Sean Burke's left foot right there, and came back out. Then the net came off to Mooring. A very alert call, call by referee S.E. Sold. And as I said, Canada has a bit of a break. The big key now is to realize you've got a break and turn the tables. This line of Homotov, Bikov, and Amilev has been the big scoring threat for the unified team. The trio has, in seven games, accumulated 33 scoring points. Well, they're very, very dangerous on that last scoring opportunity. Canada turned the puck over at the blue line just for a split second. All of a sudden, there's two passes and a great shot on Sean Burke. Bouton throws it rink wide for Kovalenko. Ahead to Butsayev, crossing with Davidov. Butsayev with a shot wide to the net. Davidov throws it out front. There's the shot. It deflects up high and goes to the corner. Lindbergh chops it along the boards and out. Kovalenko. Brings it in across the line. He's stopped by Dahl. Davidoff will now lob it to the corner. Back after it goes Lindbergh. And there's a high sticking call coming up. A penalty against Canada. Joey Juno receives a two-minute high sticking penalty. Here's some statistics for you if you like to follow this sort of thing. The Canadians have averaged roughly 14 and a half minutes of penalties a game. The unified team, nine minutes. Boroshevsky for Malikov. Back to Boroshevsky. Horhoff couldn't take that centering pass. Zuboff gets it at the point. The unified team likes to shoot it from the point. Moranoff and Malikov lead the team in shots on goal, and most of those have come from the point. They like to sneak a man in late from the backside. What a great job by Wally Schreiber, winning the one-on-one -on, -one on the boards and getting the puck down. The ice killing a few valuable seconds. Here's Zuboff, and another shot. Fired down the ice by Adrian Plavsic. Zuboff came racing in from the point, looking for that feed in the slot. 
as compared to the National Hockey League, I would think the most penalized team at this stage of the season is probably around 40 minutes a game. I mentioned Canada at eight and change, and the unified team close by. Dave Tippett, who was described by Coach Dave King as one of the best defensive players he has ever had, dumps it out of the Canadian zone. Canada changing up on its penalty killing unit. It's Brost and Joseph out there, along with Schlegel and Tuck. Here comes Hamilad trying to get around Schlegel, puts on the brakes. Looks in front, now dumps it into the corner to Bikoff. Back to Hamilad. Moranov at the point, over to Hamilad. Back to Moranov, to Hamilad. Hamilad can't get a shot away. Moranov gets one, and that's deflected to the corner. Bikoff to Moranov, into the corner to Homotov. Another penalty coming up against Canada. Centering attempt, deflects off a Canadian skate. 14 seconds remaining in the penalty to Joe Juno. And Canada will be short two men. Fabian Joseph receives a slashing penalty for a hit in the corner. This is what Dave King talked about. You have to get a bit of a break, and the referee has got to let you play. There's the slash. In any other league, I don't think that call is made, particularly when you're a man down. Nonetheless, with 12 seconds remaining, Enjoy Juno's penalty. This is a big face-off for Todd Bros. Dave King managing to bite his lip, but not happy with that type of call, and he certainly hopes that those calls don't persist through the remainder of the hockey game. 12.33 gone by in the opening period. It is still scoreless. Canada has done a great job killing penalties in these Olympic games. They're ticking right around that 96% mark. Only two shorthanded goals they have had scored. Five on three, the puck loose in the Canadian zone. Bikoff has it. Five seconds left in Juno's penalty. Back to the point. Malakoff broke his stick as he walked up. And the puck is fired down the ice. Canada just one man short as Juno comes back in the ice. Zubov had a great opportunity earlier and fanned on the shot. Malakoff just had a stick break. Those kinds of things as a penalty killer you love to see happen, particularly against a power play like the unified teams. Homotov goes back to the net. Bikoff is out front. They like that short pass to Bikoff, positioned in front of the goal. Bikoff being watched by Platzik. Homotov looking for Moranov, who's sneaking in. Now gives it to Bikoff. Crumbling pass saved by Sean Burke as Hamilev came sneaking in from the backside. Bikoff at the side of the net is as quick as a rattlesnake. Unbelievable how fast he got that pass over to Hamilev. Sean Burke had to be sharp to make the save. Instead of rattlesnake, Dave King once called Bikoff a little weasel, but I think he meant that in a very complimentary fashion. Here's Kovalev shooting. The puck doesn't get through. It's blocked by Tuck. At the point, Zitnik has it. In for Zhannov, Petrenko comes out back to the, to the other corner. Kovalev, the 18-year-old, very shifty for a young hockey player. He has been drafted by the New York Rangers. Petrenko has it in the corner. Petrenko trying to set something up. 20 seconds remaining in the penalty to Joseph. Back to Zitnik, Yushkevich for Zhannov. Zhannov. Saved by Sean Burke. Jitnik slips it into the corner. Kovalev. Canada now back at full strength. Jitnik shoots. That goes off a leg. Canada doing a fine job of penalty killing with some help from Sean Burke. Now the puck is flipped out the center ice. Broken up by the unified team. Dave Hannon gains control at his own blue line. Hannon having some problems along the boards. 14.59 gone by in the opening period, and finally they tie it up directly in front of the Canadian bench for a face-off in a scoreless first period. Play again just underway. Butsayev dumps it back of the Canadian net. John Burke leaves it there for Dan Ratushny. 
The Canadian penalty killers did an excellent job. Two back-to-back -back penalties reminds me of the opening game against France where there was five on threes and the penalty killers were outstanding. The key now is to keep that intensity. Don't have a letdown after you've done an outstanding job killing off a unified team power play advantage. Two-line pass resulting in the whistle and the puck coming back for a face-off just inside the Canadian blue line. Tickets for this game were selling from 500 to 1,000 francs. So at today's exchange rate in Canadian dollars, the top ticket is almost $220. Well, so far, this first 15 minutes and 30 seconds of the opening period, has given the people their money's worth. It's been an excellent period of hockey. The Canadians are sticking in and playing the game plan that they've devised. It's worked very, very well so far. Tushny tied up his man as Hines gets the puck and drives it to the corner. Bowerton throws it to the other point, gets a return pass, moves it ahead to Davidoff. Davidoff for Butsayev. Butsayev is not flying. There's a penalty coming up against Canada. So with four minutes remaining, 3.59 to be precise in the opening period, Kurt Giles will head off to the penalty box. Sven Erik Sol, the referee from Sweden, has called a tripping penalty against Giles. Well, you just saw the tail end of Kurt Giles putting his stick between Kovalenko's legs, I believe it was. Kovalenko went down and Giles went to the penalty box. Canada's done a great job on the first two. Let's see if they can make it three in a row. Obviously, if you continue in this vein, the power play that the unified team has will eventually put one by you. But if Canada can just look after this one with 16 minutes and one second gone in the first period, and perhaps get one of their own, it can change the tempo of the game. They can gain something positive from this. Yushkevich chased back into his own zone by Archibald. He and Schreiber are out there along with Tottenham Schlegel. So Korov gets in across the line for Borgen. He couldn't handle it, and the puck deflects to Sean Burke, and he holds it for a faceoff. Sean Burke is a veteran of international competition. Pressure in this type of game is nothing new for him. He has played in three world championships, two Olympic games, and one world junior championship. Sean Burke right now property of the New Jersey Devils and with the way he's played in the Olympics so far I would think his value has increased somewhat. New Jersey is a team that can not make the playoffs or potentially win a Stanley Cup and I have to think that Lou Lamorello is looking at the asset that he has in Sean Burke and has to very seriously now give Burke his wish and Look at trading him in order to help the New Jersey Devils, if not to advance the career of Sean Burke. Boroshevsky, who can fly, comes down the left side. He's taken in heavily against the boards by Brose. Hines back of the net, lost the pocket, comes to the point to Malakoff. Malakoff dumps it to the corner. It's left there for Boroshevsky, back to Malakoff at the point. Malakoff getting set, makes the shot over to Yushkevich. He had problems controlling it. He dumps it into the side of the net. Prokhorov takes a hit. Bolden comes in to help out. Bolden gets it back to the point. Malakoff shoots, saved by Sean Burke. And the puck is under his arm. He wasn't quite sure where it was. Malakoff came racing in and jumped over Burke and trying to get to the loose puck. Here's a look at the shot. Sean Burke challenges the shooter, gets it on his blocker, and it's laying right there. We can see it, but Sean Burke can't nonetheless. A great save. Malakoff has got a tremendous wrist shot. Watch how these guys shoot the puck. They've got great wrist shots, great snap shots, and not only are they hard, but they get them away very quickly and very, very accurately as well. A great job penalty killing by Brost, Joseph, Hines, and Tut. Four names that probably will not go down in the Hall of Fame of hockey, but when you look at the way guys like these four and a number of others overachieved, it's what has gotten Canada to this gold medal game. Amaila, 42 seconds left in the penalty. Takes a return feed. For Beekoff, Beekoff back to Hamilev. Schlegel has lost the stick. Moranov shoots. It's blocked before it gets to the net. Omutov in the corner. 
27 seconds left in the penalty. Homotov back to Moranov. He couldn't get a shot. Over to Kasparaitis to Homotov. Homotov to Bikov. Bikov trying to walk in. It's fired wide. Banked off the boards and out by Klasik. Just 10 seconds remaining in the penalty. Homotov back in. Bikov going for the net. Homotov checked by Dave Tippett. The puck loose along the boards. Picked up by Bikov for Moranov. His shot is blocked as Canada returns to full strength. Dropping in front of that was Kevin Dahl. And Canada has killed off yet another penalty with a minute and 40 seconds remaining in the opening period. Homotov comes in for Bikov. Bikov is checked by Kevin Dahl. Eric Lindros has it. He throws it ahead to Hines. Hines tried to go cross ice. It bounced off a leg to the corner. Lindris comes in to help up. He clears the zone. Mandeville trying to free it. Does get it now. Throws it right wide. Archibald racing after it. Stolenkov plays it to the corner. Lindros runs into his man. Sends him flying. Picked up by Jamnov. Jamnov brings it in offside as Petrenko had been knocked down by Schreiber inside the Canadian blue line. But Eric Lindros has really been a physical presence in this hockey game and he seems to be enjoying the contact he is having with unified team players. Well, I don't know. As we look at this hit on Petrenko, Lindros with a crushing body check and Victor Tikhanov is not happy about this. We're going to get another look at it. Lindros just takes the body as solid as a guy can take the body in. Whether you like what has gone on with Lindros or whether you don't, and I don't know whether you're getting the flavor watching your television, but I'll tell you what, this guy is earning points in everybody's book who is at these games. He has played a whale of a first period. It's not just the goals and assists that you measure Eric Lindros by. It's his very presence on the ice. Teams have to be aware of number 88. Well, you're absolutely right. He exemplifies the Canadian team and the fact that they've got a couple of marquee players. Randy Smith comes in and lets a shot go that is gloved and held by Stalenka. The Canadians have a couple of marquee players that have to play at the top of their game, but they're supported by good cast of overachievers guys like Smith Brost Fabian Joseph as we get a look at Randy Smith directing a puck at Stalinka what a couple of great body checks so far by Lindros 43 seconds remaining in the opening period it is still scoreless in this gold medal battle between Canada and the unified team well wherever you're looking in today in Canada whether it's early morning on the West Coast or mid-morning on the East Coast approaching noon. We hope you're enjoying the action as Canada tries for its first Olympic gold in 40 years. Hines fakes the shot, walks in, tried to throw it in front. It was blocked, dumped out of the zone. Adrian Plavsic gathers it up for Juno. Juno gets to center before dumping it in. Bowden starts back. He feeds Davidoff. Davidoff working against Hines. He's tied up. Utsayev tries to get it back to the point. He's checked along the boards, but managed to throw it to the corner. The puck loose. Picked up by Joe Juno. Gord Hines doing a great job in the corner and being slow, moving away from the shifty Davidoff. Shot right on by Plavsic. As the penalty, or the period, comes to an end. And the Canadian team and the unified team are in a scoreless deadlock in a very entertaining first period here at the Maribel Ice Rink. We'll be back after this. A large number of Canadians in attendance at the Maribel Ice Rink, and if they're not wearing something with a maple leaf on, they have painted their faces with the Canadian emblem. And hopefully... Team Canada will be crowned with a gold medal. The Canadians can be very proud of the 20 minutes they've just played. Did a great job in killing three penalties. Still got a few pucks that Stelinkoff were very, very strong physically. A couple of guys that I noticed in particular, Dave Tippett, I thought Gord Hines did a good job in his end of the rink. Lindros and Sean Burke, of course. Desperation hockey was the key to Canada's success in the first period. Woolley 
Flips it out and down the ice, racing after it is Tippett. Tippett battling with Moranoff, the big unified team defenseman, gets there first. Following up on the play, he gets it to center. Beekoff shoots it into the Canadian zone. Burke leaves it back of his own goal. Woolley works out slowly, throws a rink-wide pass for Bros. Bros dodges a check, puts on the brakes. Battles with Kasparitis along the boards. It's kept in the zone. Moranoff goes to the corner after it. Tippett trying to get to the puck, ran into the referee's soul. He went flying. Beekoff drops it off for Hamila at his shot. Deflects up high into the crowd. If you recall in the opening period, Lindros was jawing with Victor Tikhanov. What he was telling Tikhanov is we see S.C. Soul go to the ice. Dave Tippett says, excuse me. Lindros told Tikhanov that his players weren't big enough or strong enough. Here's a look at S.C. Soul getting run over by Tippett. As I said, a bit of an excuse me, but Dave Tippett knows he's got a job to do, and there was a bit of an interruption there. Lindros, as I was saying, telling Tikhanov that his players weren't big enough. That got Tikhanov upset. Lindros sticking to his word that he was going to get Tikhanov going in this hockey game, and he has. Each time Lindros has skated past the unified team bench, he has been jawing away at the players and Victor Tikhanov. They say that Victor Tikhanov does not speak English, but I think he does understand some of the gestures and comments from 18-year-old Eric Lindros. A uh, universal language, when you shorten some of the words to a few less syllables, it makes it very, very easy, particularly in the language of hockey. 6,100 spectators, a full house watching the action as Lindbergh is tied up at center ice. Tut has the puck for Team Canada. Tut flips it into the corner. Racing in after it is Juno. Kravchuk cut him off. Bouton plays it up along the boards for Davidoff. Davidoff pushes it ahead to Butsaya. Back to Davidoff. Davidoff trying to walk out front. There's the shot, the save, another shot, and yet another save. And they bang away at it and work on the line. Stop a backhander. Well, we can start to see a little bit of frustration in the unified team, whacking their sticks on the ice after some average goaltending by Sean Burke. Absolutely outstanding. Watch Burke here. Faces Butsayev all by himself. Doesn't stop the first one, but gets the second one as well. And if two is not enough, he says, I'll get the third one. As he sold in excellent position to show that it wasn't in the net. There's a look from behind the net. And notice as he sold. Who is right on top of things? Sean Burke figuring just a regular day's work as the post helps out. Another break for Canada, and that's just what Canada needs. They've played some excellent hockey so far, and a little bit of luck never hurts when it's all said and done. You forget about those things that helped you out. The second time that Sean Burke has been aided by the goalpost, but the goalpost has always been referred to as a goaltender's best friend. Well, you're absolutely right. There's a look at the Canadian team, and if you can name these players in 10 years, I would be very, very surprised, but they've done an absolutely outstanding job getting to where they are now. Puck is blocked and bounces out to center. Fired back in by the unified team. Kurt Giles has it. He throws it rink wide. Dahl shoots it to the corner. The puck bounces off the end board. Lindris was just beaten to the puck. The unified team comes back, led by Bolden. He was trying to get it over to Boroshevsky, broken up by Canada. Loose in the corner. Dahl has it. Dahl laid it off LeBeau into the corner. Malikoff whips it around the boards. Prokhorov into the center ice area. Bolden is checked. Back up Lindris trying to break through. He's knocked down. LeBeau gets the puck. LeBeau in the corner trying to get it out front. Manderville couldn't get a stick on it. The unified team starts back. Boroshevsky working in against Ratushny. Ratushny knocks him down, and the puck is played back out to center. Dan Ratushny can bench press 350 pounds. Boroshevsky. Only weighs 170, he threw him around like a rag doll. Hines flips it behind his net for Ratushny. He tried to poke it up along the boards. It comes to Zhitnik at the point. He keeps it in. Hines goes to the corner, whips it up along the boards, but not out. It's loose in the Canadian zone. And now Hines brings it out. On the wing for Manderville. Manderville fires it in deep. 
Nick Lindros broke his stick earlier in this period that is still out in the ice behind the goal. Around the Stalinkoff with the save. Vanderbilt trying to get it loose. That broken stick has caused some problems as the puck has been deflected off it a couple of times. Finally, it's brought out to center by Kovalev. He can't go anywhere with it. Brad Slagle starts back for Canada. Brad Slagle is knocked down, tried to throw it in front. The puck goes loose, back of the goal. Lift up along the boards. And fired into Canadian territory by Beacock. Beacock was knocked down in the far corner as it's played out off Hannon. Back into the unified team zone. Moranoff lugs it back. He'll be joining the Toronto Maple Leafs on the 10th of March for a mile his shot blocked by Burke. They can't clear. Moranoff with another shot, and it's held by Sean Burke with Hamilev standing right in front of the Canadian goal. 4:02 gone by in the second period. It's still scoreless. Eric Lindros lost his stick and got into it with Malakoff. Watch how this stick shatters. A little bit of beef on both ends of that piece of lumber. You see the. Stick go flying up in the air. And Eric Lindros and Malikov, two guys that are not small in any stretch of the imagination, but I'll tell you what, Lindros is one owly guy today, and that's a great sign for Canada. Canada getting perhaps a little undisciplined in the last couple of minutes, turning over a few pucks with this unified team. If you give them an opportunity with a the puck, they attack so very quickly. The other key is if you're getting it out of your end, make sure it gets out. Don't leave it two feet inside. So as we saw in the first period, they can counter and generate a scoring opportunity very, very quickly. Hannon chips it out. Tippett picks it up. Tippett looking in front for Brooks, going for the net. He was tied up. Kasparaitis throws it quickly out to center ice. Homutov has it. Homutov trying to get around top. He's knocked off the puck. Intercepts a clearing attempt. Homutov comes back to the line to Beekoff. Beekoff is knocked down. Roast was on him. The puck goes back to the goal. Tut is there, battling with it along with Tippett. Homutov for Krabchuk. Krabchuk tried to throw it back to the point. It bounces high and is gloved and held by Sean Burke. 441 gone by in a scoreless second period. Joe Juno leading the Canadian team in scoring six goals and eight assists. And while he hasn't officially put his signature on a contract, we understand that he has agreed to the most recent offer from the Boston Bruins and will be joining the National Hockey League team after the Olympic Games. He had some very enticing offers from teams in Europe, including one from Lugano. The shot from the point, flipped to the corner by Burke. Davidoff being watched by Giles. Davidoff trying to work out front is knocked down. Puck picked up by Lutsayev. Lutsayev throws it into the corner. Davidoff for Kovalev. His shot goes off the side of the net. Back at the point, Kravchuk with a shot. It's redirected up high against the glass. The unified team applying pressure in this second period. Kovalenko plays it back to the point. Kravchuk had some problems with it at the line. Bouton trying to keep it in. It's kicked out the center ice. Joe Juno with some good soccer expertise kicking the puck out after losing his stick. Something that the European teams do is practice soccer a lot. That's why they're so good with their feet. Kevin Dahl flips it out into the neutral zone. Picked up there by Schreiber. He feeds Lindros. Lindros for Archibald. Couldn't pick up the pass. Lindros stays with Borosiewski as Schreiber comes back. Schreiber shoots. Hit the post. Lindros shoots. That's the next line. Wally Schreiber ringing one off the post. He knocks down a clearing attempt. Then is checked and comes up to center ice. Wooly drives it in. The team that has scored first in Olympic competition has won 35 games and lost just eight. Boroshevsky in across the line. Rink wide pass. Backhand. Flip shot. Saved by Sean Burke. He took it away from Kukora. Sean Burke has been a very calming influence for the Canadian team. I don't know whether his dad, Ron, is still in the building or not. But if he is, 
as he's seeing some great goaltending by his son. His dad had to leave when the shootout occurred between Germany. Went out in the parking lot. I talked to him before the game. He said, well, I'm going to start the game in the building. Well, he could be very proud of the way Sean has played throughout the Olympics. There's Stelenkov, the shot off the post. The unified team getting a break. This Stelenkov has only faced 18 shots in each of the seven games that he's played. He hasn't had to wash his underwear after the games. The Canadians want to make sure that they get this guy involved in the game and just see whether he can play nets the way Sean Burke has. Shamrock banned on the shot. Got another swipe at it. It bounces high to the corner. Matushny playing it around for Plavsic. Kovalev runs into him. The puck is loose along the boards. Now Plavsic takes it to safety. Back of his own goal. Over to Ratushny. Ratushny looking for LeBeau. He was covered. Simply put it down the ice. Zitnik is checked by LeBeau. His pass intercepted. Jamdoff leaves it for Petrenko. LeBeau checks in. The ball threw it ahead to Joseph, but the official rules that he closed his glove on it as he carried it out across the blue line. And in the neutral zone, Kovalev took a hit, and he's still down. If you move it all forward with the puck, the officials in international hockey blow the whistle immediately. As LeBeau was on the ice, I think somehow he caught Kovalev. Kovalev went down like a ton of bricks. And... Victor Tikhanov looks on, deciding what he'll do if the future New York Rangers star Kovalev doesn't get up. Here's a look at what happened. It looks like Kovalev just went to the ground, as you saw, for no particular reason. Here's something kind of neat to watch as Kovalev gets up very, very slowly. Let's see how long it takes before he's out there flying for the next shift. Kovalev will celebrate his 19th birthday tomorrow. A draft choice, a number one selection by the New York Rangers in 1991. And they appear to have a dandy in this young man. Well, there's a number of great, young, promising players. LeBeau doesn't hit Kovalev very hard. A bit of a whack on the ankle. Certainly nothing like the chop on the ankle that Bobby Clark administered in 1972. <laughs> but it took Kovalev a little bit longer to get up than it did Yakushev with the broken ankle. Tikhanov has said that his regret about the Canada Cup was that he did, did not take young Kovalev to Canada for the tournament. Hamilad works to the line. The puck is loose in the slot. Picked up by Meekov, the backhander. And another save by Sean Burke. Dave Hannon flips it out. Kasparaitis has it for the unified team. He's just 19 years of age. He's undrafted. And the general managers and scouts in attendance have liked the play of number six for the unified team. Here comes number four for Canada, Hines. For Lindros, Lindros trying to get a shot away, gives it to Archibald. He tried to go around Beacock, it bounces high to Schreiber. Schreiber has had the best scoring opportunity, bringing one off the post. Schreiber in front, Lindros was tied up, couldn't get to it. Ratushny along the boards, had problems trying to keep it in, and the unified team flip it the length of the ice. The unified team playing very, very well defensively. Eve Archibald tried to give Bikov a dance. But Bikov, who is very, very quick with his stick and does the same moves on other players, would have no part of it and strip the puck from Archibald. Dave King said before the game that one of the keys for Canadian success would be to skate without the puck. They're doing that. Here's comes Kovalenko, working against Jason Woolley. Woolley breaks it up, Canada comes back. Lindbergh, drops it for Schreiber. Schreiber back to the point. Schlegel with a shot right on. And Stolenkov makes the save. 8.57 into the period. Play in the Canadian zone. Boroshevsky. Back of the net for Prokhorov, being watched by Plavsic. He leaves it for Boroshevsky, Prokhorov into the slot, back to the point. Zubov shot high over the net. Plavsic plays it ahead to Juno. For Lindbergh, Lindbergh lost control of it. Boroshevsky takes it back in his own zone. On the previous shift, Eric Lindros absolutely flattened Kovalenko. 
Kovalenko was trying to adjust his helmet after Lindros ran over him. I think it was more a case of trying to get his senses back. Another great body check by Lindros. We talked about his physical presence in this game. And he has delivered his 6'4", 230 pounds a number of times. It looks like number 14, Kovalev, has made a miraculous recovery. He's back out on the ice after spending a couple of minutes waiting for a penalty to be called. Petrenko taken in against the boards by Tuck, who will return to play hockey in Norway immediately after the Olympic Games. Jamnov picks up the loose puck. Jamnov has some clever moves. He's trying to move out front. Hines sticks with him. Jamnov throws it to the corner. And Sean Burke reading the play, flips it around the other side. And I think we have coincidental minors being called. I believe Kovalev and Sean Burke are getting chased to the penalty box for a little bit of an incident between the two. That comes 10.32 into the Number second 40, period. Kovalev and Burke drawing slashing penalties. Kent Manderville will serve the penalty. Moranov for Homotov. His shot is fired wide. Hannon picks it up in the corner. He leaves it there for Plavsic. No score in the hockey game. Lead pass bounces away from Hannon. Back after it goes Kasparitis. A whistle on the play for an icing call against the Canadian team. I mentioned that Eric Lindris has been running over people a number of times. Jim, I think you have developed a new appreciation for the skills of 18-year-old Larry Eric Lindris, particularly in this game. Oh, there's no question about that. You just saw the hit on Kovalenko. Now, some people watch Lindros in other games, and they say, gee, he doesn't seem to be doing a heck of a lot. Well. I don't mind if he hasn't done a heck of a lot in some games. He's doing her tonight. Kasparitis fires one, and Burke just got a pad on that one. Kasparitis racing in from the point. It goes to the other side. Marana shot blocked by Hannah. This Canadian squad is doing an excellent job in getting sticks, pads, hands in front of a lot of the shots from the blue line by the unified team. Uh, when you get down to one game, winner take all, it becomes desperation hockey in Canada has done a great job playing desperation hockey for this first 31 minutes and 21 seconds right from sean burke up to number 88 eric lindros there's a look at beacock quickly and kasparitis kind of a neat story number six darius kasparitis had to sign an agreement with the unified team and in signing that agreement it means that he can no longer represent his native latvia in any type of national competition. Bowerton shot from the point, bounces off the end boards. Utsaya being watched by Hines. It's freed for Kovalenko. Kovalenko trying to move out front. Back to the point. Bowerton fanned on it, it slides down the ice. Crabtrick quickly throws it up to the blue line. It's flipped high into Canadian territory with Jason Woolley going back after it. For Brad Schlegel, he's taken in against the boards by Bout Malakoff, draft choice of the New York Islanders, a player that Bill Torrey was most impressed with and hopes to have in New York very soon, back of his own net. He leaves it there for Prokhorov. Prokhorov wheels his way down the right side. In across the line, Prokhorov getting set. His shot deflects high. Loose at the side of the net. Borshevsky to Malikov. His shot goes wide. Prokhorov in the corner. Tied up there by Schlegel. Borshevsky frees the puck. Borshevsky tries to go back to the point. The penalized players on the ice. And Lindris tried to hit Manderville with a breakaway pass. It was just beyond his reach. It's fired around the boards and down the ice. And this is an icing call against the unified team. It's still scoreless. 12-46 into the second. Just underway, Kovalev trying to throw it out. And he succeeds. Jamnov flips it in for Kovalev. It bounced away from him. Loose in the corner in the Canadian zone. Plavsic flips it around to the other side. 
Takes a return pass. Banks it off the boards for Juno. He chips it out to center ice. Fired back in by the unified team. Blavsic has it again. He goes rink wide. Lead pass up to the blue line. Picked up now by Smith. Smith dumps it into the unified zone. 13-26 gone by in the second period. Yushakevich, long shot. Sean Burke decides to hold it as Homutov was cruising in looking for a loose puck. Now the fact that Canada has guaranteed themselves a silver medal in Olympic competition and is doing a great job in the quest for the gold is a tremendous opportunity for the Canadian Olympic program and in particular Hockey Canada and the center of excellence in Calgary. A lot of great things come out of that particular organization and it's nice to see some results after a tremendous amount of hard work on the part of guys like Dave King, Billy Hay, Norm Robertson, and the list goes on. Kasparitis and Hannon battling in the corner. Gross is checked there, the punch comes loose. Here's the chance for Peacock as he works in as check. Slides into the net, the puck going to the corner. Beekoff just kept on motoring towards the Canadian net before it was finally knocked away from him. Brost drives it in. Back to the net. Casparitis takes a hard hit from Eric Lindros. That's about the fifth solid body check that Eric Lindros has dished out as he accepts that pass at center ice. It's whistled down. It's a two-line call against Canada. Puck loose at center ice. It's deflected up over the boards and out of play. Brian Tutt is an interesting story. He joined the Canadian Olympic team late. He was in the right spot at the right time when the Canadian team was playing in Europe. They were short defensemen. Dave King remembered Tut from his previous experience with the national squad, gave him a call in Norway. He was available, joined the team, impressed Dave King, and garnered a spot on the Olympic squad. And then will be returning to Norway for the playoff action there immediately after the Olympics. Aside from Norway, Tut has played in places like Maine, Toledo, Springfield, Hershey, Kalamazoo, New Haven, Baltimore. Wouldn't it be a nice way to play in Alberville and add that to a list of a number of towns people won't remember, but they will certainly remember his accomplishments here. Another hit by Lindris on Bowton. They puck back into the unified team zone. Four minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the second period. A scoreless game, this gold medal battle. Davidoff getting set, looking to move in. Lost control of the puck, picked up by Lindris. Lindris with one hand on the stick, trying to move it along the board. Picked up now by Ratushny. Ratushny for Lindris, broken up by the unified team defenseman Kravchuk, but Schreiber following up on the play shoots it in. Zuboff to Davidoff. Love saved by Sean Burke, and he holds on with Bolden cruising in from the right side. Four minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the second period. Brad Schlegel has been with this Olympic hockey team for four years. The captain, he has played more international hockey games than anybody else in North America simply because of his involvement with this terrific program. He's gotten to see a number of different countries played in countless communities across Canada and now has a guaranteed silver medal and he would love to get the gold. What a great program that Schlegel has been a big part of over four years. This is the 256th time that Brad Schlegel has worn the Team Canada uniform. Face off to the right of Sean Burke. Schlegel puts it around the boards to Juno. Brad Schlegel's parents are here and they are indeed proud of the play of the Canadian captain. Hines back in his own zone over to Schlegel. Schlegel banks it off the boards for Randy Smith. Smith, rink-wide pass for Joseph. He had problems picking up the pass. Boroshevsky, rink-wide for Prokhora. Hines gets back there first, and Smith knocks it out of the zone. 
carried in by the unified team. Hines flips it around the boards for Randy Smith. The puck goes loose. Boroshevsky back of the net. Boroshevsky trying to walk out front. Hope check by Sean Burke. Back at the point. Yushkevich with the shot. Right on. Burke the save. Zubov makes the shot for Yushkevich. He shoots it wide of the net. Off the end board. Sean Burke dies in the puck for a stoppage of play with three minutes and 17 seconds left in the period. You saw the look on Boroshevsky's face in front of Sean Burke. Each member of the unified team has to claw and scratch for any ice inside of the Canadian blue line. Burke is using his blocker to stop that blast from the point. A perfectly placed shot. Yuskevich can really hammer the puck. Burke is getting a tremendous amount of help from his teammates. There's no free shots in front of the net. If somebody is getting a shot, they're paying for it. And Burke is stopping it and then doing a great job in controlling the rebound. Two shots have gone off the post, but Wally Schreiber also rang one off the post for Team Canada in this period. It is still scoreless. Schreiber looking for Archibald, too far for him. Lindris racing into the corner against Jamnov. He gets it to Archibald, and there's a whistle and a penalty coming up. And Lindros is going to go off to the box for his battle with Jamnov along the boards. Lindros was on the line, trying to pull Jamnov out of the way. He gets a two-minute holding penalty. And I think if the replay pops up, you'll see that he probably deserved it as he sold, banishing Lindros to the box for this right here. As you see, Lindros powering his way by all over Jamnov on the back. Canada's done a great job in killing three consecutive unified team penalties. In the first period, Viktor Tikhonov was telling his players he wanted to see more shots from the defenseman. Let's see if his players listen on their first power play opportunity with three minutes and four seconds remaining in the second period. Yushkevich, the cannon racing in. They take it to the end board. Cannon is playing with badly bruised ribs. Tippett, I should say, is playing with badly bruised ribs. Beekoff in across the line. Beekoff back to the point for Moranov. Over to Yushkevich to Moranov. To Yushkevich. Canada setting up that box well. They have to be aware, though, of someone sneaking in from the backside. Here's the pass to Moranov. He shoots saved by Burke. The puck goes to the corner. Dave Hannon can't get it out. A runoff to Yushkevich. He blasts one. What say, Sean Burke? Kurt Giles in a couple of real battles in front of the net. Burke stops Yushkevich's shot. If you can see the curve on Yushkevich's stick here, I think you might consider calling for a measurement as we get a look at Burke stopping that blast again from Yuskevich. Don't be surprised if late in the hockey game, depending on the circumstances, that Dave King calls for a measurement of one or more of the unified team sticks. Well, King has done that in the past. He is very, very prepared in all areas. As you see, Don, it wouldn't surprise me a bit to see King use a bit of a trick if he needs it before this game is over. 107 remaining in the penalty to Eric Lindris. No score in the hockey game. 17-49 gone by in the second period. The rules for curves in the Olympics, 1.5 centimeters. The National Hockey League, it's half an inch. Take one and a 1.5 and divide it by 2.54, and you'll see curves are a little bit more lenient here in international competition, but by the look of some of the bends on the wood of players here, gosh, I can't imagine that they're all legal. A mile out for Beekoff. Beekoff for Hobartov. He couldn't reach it. Along the boards, Beekoff, rink wide for Homotov. It bounced away from him. Ten members of this unified team play in the Canada Cup. Brought in by Homutov, offside. Homutov plays in Freeborg in the Swiss Elite League. His line mate there is Beekov, and these guys are so popular that the team paints their faces on the side of the team bus in a game against the Swiss to begin with. There were as many Swiss fans here cheering for the unified team as there were for the Swiss team. After the game, Beekov and Homutov went over and saluted the crowd. 
fact, they're so popular, Victor Tikhanov remarked that he couldn't believe that playing in Switzerland, a number of the Swiss knew the words to the former Russian national anthem. Shamrock trying to move in track, gets it, third one just wide, and the puck is banked off the boards and down the ice by Giles with 20 seconds remaining in the penalty. Notice Stalinkov coming out of the net to move the puck up as quickly as possible. He's done that more often than not to his teammates. Canada having some problems trying to clear. Jamnov has it. Jamnov works his way to the corner. Three seconds left in the penalty. Jamnov gets it again. Back in the point. Shitnik lets the shot go through traffic and bounces on the mesh and is held there as Lindris comes out of the penalty box. One minute exactly remaining in the second period. The game, the gold medal battle, is still scoreless. There's a look at Bonnie and Carl Lindros, and there's a look at Desperation Hockey. Sean Burke follows Jamnov right across in front of the net. And even if the shot had been on the net, Burke had his left pad there to cover the angle. There's another look. Jamnov, a first-round draft pick for the Winnipeg Jets. In fact, in 1991, 25 Soviets drafted in the National Hockey League. We talked about this before this tournament started. The only difference between this team and past Soviet teams was the fact that you didn't know these names yet, but mark my words, next year in the National Hockey League, you will see more unified team members, and they will have an impact. Jump down the ice, Lindbergh racing in, but it is an icing call against Team Canada. Lindbergh hasn't scored as much as he would have liked in this tournament. He's a guy that can change the tempo of a game and pop one when you need it. And wouldn't it be nice if he popped one in the remaining 47 seconds of this period? Free agent signing by the Calgary Flames. He has yet to score a goal. He has four assists. He has tremendous wheels, but his scoring opportunities in the Olympic Games have been limited. Well, he says that his favorite memory in hockey was the day he got the call from Dave King. Now that things continue the same way and Canada can get one here, he might preempt that memory with one other. Here comes Juno. Slap shot deflects off the stick, and it goes up into the rafters here at the Maribel Ice Ring. A very low ceiling in this hockey facility, and we have had pucks deflect up into the rafters, hit the lights, and on occasion bounce off those rafters into the crowd, and a fan, a Canadian fan, obviously, has a souvenir and a memory of this Olympic hockey tournament. Well, as in most places in Europe, Canadians are very, very well regarded, and we've had nothing but warm receptions by the people here in Mirabel. As he sold is the only Swede that made it to the gold medal round. The Swedish team was favored by a number of people, and they haven't made it. Ended up in fifth spot after only losing one game in the Olympic competition. Lindris along the boards. Moving out front was checked as he tried to get a shot on Stalenkov. It goes all the way down the ice. Burke leaves it there for Giles. Up the middle, Lindris in the neutral zone. Picks it up. Gets away from one check. Quick shot went off a leg, and Stalenkov grabs it at the side of the net. As he skated past Stalenkov, he just kind of dragged his foot by him, and Malikov skated with him to say something to number 88. Well, just as Ken Dryden made the pose famous of standing on his stick with his glove over the end of it, Lindros, I think, will start to make this pose rather well known. He's a big man, and he likes to rest by putting his stick across his pads and getting a bit of a break. Here's something to think about with 12 seconds remaining in this period. If this game is tied after regulation time, you've got a 10-minute overtime period, and then sudden death, playoff shots, five shooters. If it's tied as it was after five shooters against Germany, you reverse the order, change teams and go from there. Another little tidbit, in 1987, Dave King coached at the World Championships, ended up in a 0-0 tie with the then Soviet Union. Five seconds remaining in the period, and we are 20 minutes away from the gold medal with the game still scoreless. 
Team Canada playing a solid defensive game again in the second. The shot's on goal, 25-16 for the unified team, but it is still a scoreless gold medal battle. Alberville, the ancient flame of competition ignites beneath a cold black February sky and France invites us all to bask in its warm glow of friendship. Faster, higher, stronger, triumph for a bonny lass. A silver bullet turns to gold. Magical memories. Joy, beginnings, ultimate elation, ecstasy on ice and on the mountain. The games of youth, the games of greatness. Pure triumph, pure happiness, a golden love story. Share the magic once more. The third period about to begin in a scoreless deadlock for the gold medal. Canada and the unified team. One shot perhaps will determine which team leaves with the gold and which team is forced to accept the silver. Dave King with a nifty little trick after the first period. Sylvie Digg, after winning a gold medal for Canada, took it into the dressing room. Allowed everybody to have a look at it, but it was keep your hands off, guys. It's not ours. We've got to earn one ourselves. Sylvie Dagg, a gold medalist in short track speed skating. As the Canadian coaching staff employs all the tricks. The puck back at the point. Beekoff's long shot, knocked down at the point. Tip it for Hannon. He banks it off the boards. Fired back in by the unified team. I talked about the rib problems that Dave Tippett has had, and I asked if he was going to freeze them. He said, no, I'm not going to. He said, emotion should be a strong enough painkiller. At the end of the second period, the Canadians getting a little frustrated with referee S.E. Sold. A couple of high sticks, one on Joe Juno, and the odd other penalty that they felt could have been called. Utsayev leaves it for Davidov. His shot wide, the rebound. They score! The third period has been the strong period for the Canadians. The last time Canada played the unified team, they beat them overall in the third. You have to watch with the way a rink is set up. The puck can come out a lot easier from behind the net after a missed shot, and that's exactly what happened on this particular play. The shot misses on Burke's glove side, and he gets over quickly. But Davidov is right there to pound another one at Burke. Watch how the puck comes out quickly. Burke is sliding across. And from the direction of the puck, Don, it almost looked like that shot would have been wide. Sean Burke just a little bit unlucky on that one. Nonetheless, still 19 minutes remaining in the third. Canada can't come back. Lindbergh blasts one from the point. It's gloved and held by Stalenkov. Davidoff took the shot, missed the net, but Butsayev picked up the rebound off the end boards and 101 into the third. It is 1-0 for the unified team. Some line juggling by Viktor Tikhanov, moving Davidoff to the line with Butsayev off the line with Baikov, and Omutov has paid a dividend in the first minute of the third period. Remember, we indicated earlier that the unified team has scored in every game, and the only game in which Canada did not score first, or the unified team has scored first, the only game in which Canada has not scored first was against the unified squad. one nothing. the unified team leading. Back after it goes Plavsic. Plavsic up on the left side for Tut. He dumps it in. Schreiber bumps with Zitnik. Schreiber in the corner trying to free it. Getting some help from Lindris. Now Zitnik moves it up to the blue line. Jamnov. 
He takes a shot. It's gloved by Burke. Petrenko standing in front of the Canadian net, 2-0-3 into the first period, or third period. Wally Schreiber joining the team at the Globe and Cup, getting a second opportunity. He went back to Canada around Christmas time, and he pulled his groin, couldn't fight for a position, but Dave King gave him a second chance in DeVos, Switzerland. He joined the club and went from there after the Globe and Cup. Schreiber scoring a really... Big goal against Germany in the shootout. And has played a strong game otherwise for Canada. Kovalev looking for Petrenko. It was just beyond his reach. There's a penalty coming up. Team Canada will play shorthanded as Petrenko was high-sticked. 2-14 into the third. 1-0 the unified team. Jason Woolley goes to the penalty box, a high sticking call against the Canadian defenseman. His stick apparently came up and flipped Petrenko. Uh, expressed Canada's disappointment with the refereeing in the second period. Canada's played a strong game. I just don't think that the penalties right now should be quite as disproportionate as they are. I don't know that the unified team has been any less guilty of the odd infraction than Canada has. It's been a great game. Why interrupt it? with penalties. Beacock getting set. Shoots, bounces off a leg to the boards. Homutov. To Kasparaitis. Kasparaitis back to Homutov. He's at the edge of the circle. Rink-wide pass bounces towards the goal, and Sean Burke holds it for a face-off. 125 remaining in the penalty to Jason Woolley. The unified team has a little different incentive to win the Olympics than a team like Canada. Canada wins strictly on the basis of pride and wanting to achieve the gold medal, and not that the unified team looks at that as any less of an accomplishment, but the Soviet Union in the past has given their team members quite a financial bonus. In the Calgary Olympics, it was in the neighborhood of five to $10,000. Small change by NHL standards, but still. The run off with a shot. Love save by Sean Burke. And when you consider that Victor Tikhanov says he makes the equivalent of $20 a month, five to $10,000 is pretty impressive numbers. Here's a look at the save by Burke. Watch the glove snap out. And Burke, despite allowing one goal, is right back to his first and second period form. Just got to make sure that they don't lose the enthusiasm and the commitment that they had in the first two periods. They did a great job for 40 minutes. A bit of a nice bounce for the unified team has given them a one goal edge, but that can be overcome. Dave Tippett takes it back of his own net. He banks it off the boards and out. Kokora, another of the undrafted Soviets. Checked by Dave Hannon. The puck loose in the neutral zone. Picked up by Bolden. Bolden drops it off. Boroshevsky for Kokorov. Kokorov couldn't get a shot as Kurt Giles slid in front of him. Boroshevsky to Prokhorov. Prokhorov looking for Bolden. It bounced over his stick. Zubov moves back to the line for Prokhorov. There's a blast by Malikov. It hit the unified team player, Boroshevsky, at the side of the net. He went down and was very slow in getting back up. Malikov can really shoot the puck. That one hit Boroshevsky in the side, and he just crumpled to the left of Sean Burke. Here comes Davidoff. Utsayev, who has scored the only goal, throws it to the other side for Boroshevsky. Boroshevsky tried to center it, broken up by Schlegel. And Jason Woolley returns to the ice. Canada is back at full strength. Fired down the ice by Plavsic, resulting in an icing call. 420 into the third. 1-0 the unified team leads. From the faceoff, the puck goes up against the boards. Dahl is battling. It's loose for Lindris. He's checked. Pokes it away from Davidoff. Lindros pushes it ahead to Schreiber. He had problems controlling it as he got to the blue line. He circles. Flips it ahead for Lindros. Lindros plays it back of the net. Schreiber racing after it. Having problems against Bouton. The two of them go down. Petrenko starts back for the unified team. Petrenko gives it to Kravchuk. 
Kravchuk flips it to the corner, but it's offside. Kravchuk will be joining the Chicago Blackhawks after the Olympic Games. He was a high choice of theirs. And Bob Pulford was here watching Kravchuk play and was most impressed with what he saw. Well, Kravchuk played in the 88 Olympics. Got a gold medal there with the Soviet team, a fourth choice for the Blackhawks in 1991. He was one of the guys that supported Tikhanov when a number of the players rebelled. Mind you, Tikhanov says that that support came in the form of silence, saying support is there if you don't say anything bad about the coach. And that's what Kravchuk did. He didn't say anything negative about Tikhanov. And Tikhanov interpreted that as a vote of confidence and a slap on the back for Vic. And Kravchuk might be best remembered by Canadian hockey fans in that he was the lone defenseman back in 1987 in the Canada Cup when Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux broke in to score that game-winning goal. You get a look at Bolden receiving a little bit of treatment on the bench, a different method, I think, of freezing than what we have seen rubbing some sort of liquid on the outside of the sock in order to take away an injury that Bolden obviously has received in this game or some other. An icing call against Team Canada. Canada trailing 1-0 in this gold medal game. Canada hasn't generated much in the way of offense, but they have played very solidly defensively. And that bad bounce on the missed shot by Davidoff coming right out to Gutsayev, who has scored the game's lone goal. Of the 23 players in the roster right now, 19 of them for Canada have played the entire season. And that's one of the reasons the Canadians have been able to take some days off. They've played very, very well as a team together. And that's why they've had this kind of success at the Olympic Games. Gord Hines is one of the veterans of this Canadian team. Rink-wide pass to Dave Hannon for Giles. Giles flips it to the corner. Tip it. From the corner, trying to work out front. Homutov checks in. Kasparitis takes a hit from Hannon along the board, but manages to push the puck ahead. Bika gets set over to Mylev. He just failed to convert that centering pass. Hannon comes back for Canada. He works in across the line. Canada on a change. Hannon controlling, waiting for some teammates to catch up. He's knocked down. The puck fired the length of the ice. This is an icing call against the Unified team and the fans voicing their displeasure with the work of Sven Erik Sold of Sweden. This is the end of a three-way passing play between Amilev, Bikov, and Homutov. You saw the puck just slide by his stick. Consequently, Sean Burke didn't have to make the save. Here's a look at Dave Hannon getting taken down by Malakov. Malakov not putting a whole lot of pressure on Hannon. Hannon helped the situation look more like a penalty than it was. Nonetheless, an opportunity for Sol to call a penalty on the unified team where he hasn't taken that opportunity hardly at all in this game. Here comes Schreiber trying to go around Zuboff. Zuboff checks him. The two of them go heavily into the end boards. The puck. Bounces to the line, picked up by Boroshevsky to Prokhorov. Prokhorov getting set. He throws it in front, nobody there. Jason Woolley chops it along the boards. It doesn't come out, he gets it again. Slips it across to Archibald. Archibald flips it down the ice into the unified team zone. Back after it goes Malikov. 6.57 gone by in the third. 1-0, the unified team leading. Randy Smith. Fires it in, high up on the glass. Juno gets it free. Juno looking for Randy Smith. Smith couldn't reach it as he was tied up by the Soviet defenseman. Kovalenko comes back for Davidoff. Davidoff shoots. Big rebound comes to the line and is knocked out by Smith. Smith fires it into the unified team zone. Bowerton goes back after it, whips it around the boards for Davidoff. Davidoff, rink wide to Kovalev. He's checked by LeBeau. LeBeau feeds Juno. Juno, trying to get set for a shot, lets it go. Pat save by Stalenkov. Utsayev gets it out of the zone. It slides all the way down the ice. Back after it goes Hines. 
The unified team put a lot of pressure on their defense to make the defensive play and then move the puck up in that last Canadian rush. The unified team was waiting with one player at the red line, Kovalev, expecting a pass from the defenseman, even though Canada had his defenseman outnumbered in the corner. Petrenko trying to get around Plavsic. The Canadian defenseman checks in. Juno gets to center for Manderville. Over to Plavsic. He dodges a check. Plavsic got to the line. Flipped it over to Joseph, who tried to go rink wide. Got it over to Dahl. He shoots it in. A whistle on the play and a penalty coming up against the unified team. Jamnov receives a two-minute slashing penalty. He took a bit of a whack, and S.E. Sold has been calling a slash if you hack anybody above the way Jamnov did, not hard. And he gives the Canadians a great opportunity on the power play to get back in this hockey game. 8.41 gone by in the third. 1-0, the unified team leading. Utsayev with the lone goal. 1.52 remaining in the penalty to Jamnov. The faceoff to the left of Stalenkov in goal for the unified squad. Jason Woolley scored a big goal against Germany in the shootout. He looks one way and loves to shoot the other. I'd like to see him look one way and shoot the other way and put it behind Stalinkov in this power play opportunity. Here comes Homutov with Bikov. They're always dangerous, even when shorthanded. Bikov controls, moves into the slot for Homutov. He fired it up high off the glass. Picked up now by Archibald. Archibald behind his back for Jason Woolley. Woolley had problems picking it up, and it's fired down the ice by Bikov. We talked about Bikoff and Homotov playing together in Freeboard. They have played as much as 57 minutes in a single game for their Swiss League team. Dumped down the ice by Malikoff. One minute remaining in the penalty. The unified team defensemen absolutely defy you to beat them. They stand up at the blue line, and even if you're outnumbering them, take a look at the way they're stacked up across. They're very tough to beat there. Lindros! Couldn't get a shot away. Still has it along the boards. Cross ice pass. The ball fired at block. Lindros gets it again. Feeds the point. Woolley gives it back to Lindros. Lindros moving in front. Shoots. Cut bounces high. Another penalty coming up against the unified team. A shot by Hines. A mad scramble in front of the net. And then Stalenkov took a swipe with a stick. And there is Lindros who was laying right in front of him. But for 25 seconds, Canada will have a two-man advantage, and there could almost be a third penalty called here against the unified team. Lindris was down, and Stalenkov, with his goaltending stick, took a swipe at him. Well, Eric Lindros just get a couple of breaths here after generating this scoring opportunity. Watch how he goes to the net. Lindros has been a factor in this game, even though Canada's down by one. He gets the puck there. Drives towards the net and creates the havoc that caused the last goal. Even though Canada was upset with S.E. Sewell, they've managed to maintain their composure and now with some good patience have got an opportunity to get back in this hockey game. But Stalenkov really used his stick to take a swipe at Lindros after he had been knocked down in front of the unified team net. Well, no question if Sold would have been perhaps in front of the play. He may have seen that from where he was on the back. Perhaps he didn't see it. He has called penalties that he's seen, particularly slashing penalties, as we go through all the havoc that just took place. Lindros took a bit of a poke, I think, at Schlenkoff as well, and Schlenkoff tried to even the score with his goal stick. Woolley for Hines. Hines is forced back. Over to Woolley, back to Hines. Hines fakes the shot. Lindros in front. It bounced away from Woolley. Eight seconds remaining in the two-man advantage. Here's Archibald moving in. Archibald leaves it for Woolley. Woolley is forced to the corner, puts on the brakes. Gives it to Juno. Juno getting set. Juno for Woolley. He shoots, fires it wide. Penalty coming up against Canada. 
behind the play. The unified team player was tripped with 124 remaining in the penalty to Bowton. Archibald will be heading off to the penalty box. And you see S.E. Soul indicating to the officials the penalty call. There it is as he hauls down Jamnoff who had returned to the ice after coming out of the penalty box himself. Uh, if you could read Dave Archibald's lips on the way to the penalty box, he was saying to Soul, that's unbelievable. And I suppose it is at this particular stage in the game, but 10 minutes and 45 seconds expired in the third period. It's still four on four. Canada has got some good momentum going. You can worry about the calls that might have been after the game, but right now, concentration dedication and the same commitment that we've seen through the first 51 minutes. Canada's not done. Zuba flips it up along the boards to Butsaya. The only goal of the game so far. Here's Kravchuk breaking through. A play somewhat similar to what he attempted and succeeded with in the round robin game when he got the game winner. The puck is deflected over the glass at the Canadian bench, out of play. Eight minutes and 49 seconds remaining. one nothing. the unified team leading Canada in the gold medal battle here at the Maribel Ice Rink. If you want to know what kind of odds the Canadians and everyone else has been up against when the... Russians went through the Olympics since 1956. Seven golds, one silver, one bronze at the beginning of these games. 53 wins, five losses, and two ties. 411 goals, four, only 111 against. An unbelievable success ratio for the Russians, now the unified team. Lindros takes the pass and escapes. He leaves it there for Schreiber, back for Schlegel. And Zuboff deflected it out to center ice. Puck comes free to Beacock. Gorashevsky. And he raced in. Couldn't get a good shot away. Gorashevsky. Trying to slip it back to the point. Intercepted by Hines. Ahead for Lindros. Lindros for Hines. Trying to break in. Hines is protesting, I think, that maybe he deserves a penalty shot, but it's a holding call against the unified team. 40 seconds remaining in the penalty to Archibald. Four seconds remaining in the, so the unified team penalty to Bowerton. Gord Hines doing what Dave King wants from his defenseman. King has gotten defensemen that have got a little bit more offensive jump. And Hines jumping into the play, almost getting a breakaway, but nonetheless drawing a penalty. And as we talked a minute ago, be patient, keep driving. You never know what opportunity might present itself. Gord Hines trying to get the hat trick that he told us he was going to score before the game started. He said, well, I've, whenever I get involved in gold medal games, I generally get three. I think he might take even one right now. One right now would be big. Remember, if the game is tied after regulation time, 10 minutes of sudden death overtime, followed by a shootout. We've only witnessed it once in the Olympic Games. That was Canada and Germany. Canada winning by a score of 4-3. That's the way it goes into the book. On the top for Beacock. He just failed to deflect. At the point, Moranov lets a shot go against the glass. Homutov in the corner for Bikoff. Bikoff flips it back to the point. Moranov winds up his shot right on. John Burke holds it with Homutov in the crease. In six seconds, Canada will have a power play of one minute and 21 seconds. Marinov, property of the Toronto Maple Leafs, will be going to Toronto for March 10th. Like a lot of his countrymen, there's a tremendous incentive to play in what the unified team members call the Dollar League, the National Hockey League. If you can get and establish yourself in the NHL for a couple of years, you can set your family up for a few generations. 
Dave King smiling as a timeout has been called. The coach of the Canadian team appears to be very relaxed despite the tense situation that he is confronted with. Well, I think when you're well prepared and you know that your players are playing their best, you've got a certain amount of confidence and pride in what you've accomplished and I think that's coming out from Dave King right now he's simply going through and saying guys we've got an opportunity on this power play we've practiced it be confident and keep playing with the same sort of tenacity that you've exhibited in these first two and a half periods he has to be proud with the way his team's playing right from the real talented guys to his regular journeyman each guy has played to his potential Dave King first gaining international prominence in 1982 when he led Canada to a World Junior Hockey Championship. He would like to duplicate that gold medal performance here in Mirabel in the 1992 Winter Olympic Games. It's no surprise that the two coaches here representing their countries are probably two of the hardest working coaches in the game. Lindris blocks the shot, skates back into his own zone, waiting for Archibald to get on the ice. Canada now on the power play. Lindris comes down in across the line. He's checked from behind, and the puck is fired out to center. Canada will have to set up again. Canada on the power play for another minute and five seconds. It's dumped in. Stolenkov tried to throw it out of the zone. He put it over the boards and out of play. Stolenkov, contrary to the way a lot of Europeans play, and there's a penalty assessed here, Don. Stolenkov, contrary to the way a lot of Europeans play, will come out and play the puck, and I think that S.E. Sold has called a penalty on Stolenkov for shooting the puck over the boards. And it is kind of an unfair penalty because there is no glass halfway between the blue line and the goal line. Here's a look at what resulted in the penalty. Stolenkov comes out, does a great job to play the puck. You see it go over the glass into the bench, or over the bench, rather, into the bench. And I actually, when that happened, thought, what a clever maneuver. He hasn't shot it over the glass. He shot it into the bench, so he's safe from a penalty. Perhaps S.E. Sold had a little different angle. Regardless, this is a big break for Canada. A full one-minute two-man advantage. And Victor Tikhanov cannot believe the call. When you look at some of the adversity that Tikhanov has faced over his career, this must seem like a rather trivial one. Well, there is an area that, where the glass has been taken down on either side of the team benches, halfway to the icing line, to enable photographers to get their shots. And I believe that is the area that Stolenkov was trying to fire the puck out at. Normally, he would have the glass there to deflect it down the ice, but it went through there and into the unified team bench. So a penalty has been called, and Canada will enjoy a two-man advantage for a minute. The puck back to Jason Woolley at the point. He flips it into Juno. Juno to Jason Woolley. Woolley takes a shot off the skate to the corner. Hines manages to keep it in. Lindros. For Archibald, around to Juno. Juno to the point. Hines moving in. Fakes the shot. Lets it go at the flex line. Juno in the corner. Back to the point for Woolley. Woolley takes a look. Shoots. It's blocked. It comes to Juno. Juno to Hines. Hines for Woolley. Back to Hines at the side of the net. Redirected. And the save is made. Back at the point. Kept in by Hines. For Lindris, the puck bounces away from Woolley out to center ice. 12 seconds remaining in the two-man advantage. Hines gains the line, fires it in. Picked up in the corner by Archibald. Archibald flips it cross ice. It bounced away from Lindris. Lindris fires it rink wide for Juno. For Lindris! And it went off the end of his stick. The Soviet Union, or the unified team, just one man short now. The puck behind the net, it comes out front. Kokorov gains control, he clears. At times, the unified team outnumbering the Canadians on the shorthanded situation, Canada's power play. And as I mentioned, the unified team defensemen in particular challenge you to beat them. You have to beat them with a good pass or a smart play if it's one-on-one. -on -one. They'll battle you to a draw at worst. 
Lindbergh in the corner. Juno comes in to help out. The puck comes loose for Randy Smith. Smith, drop by the right away, and Stolenkov kicks it away from Lindros. 13 seconds remaining in the penalty. Five minutes and six seconds left in the hockey game. one nothing. the unified team leading. Here's a look at the last chances. Stolenkov ends up scooping up the puck. Right here, Lindros is in the middle of things, and Stolenkov has covered the entire net. Stolenkov wearing number 20, the former number of star goaltender Vadislav Trecek. And so far today, he has done what Trecek did a number of times, and that is keep Canada off of the scoreboard completely. Coach Dave King wanted his troops to test Stolenkov. He had not faced many shots during the Olympic Games. They felt that he played back in the net and went down a lot. And if they fired at him, they might get some goals, but they haven't had many opportunities to shoot the puck at him. You just had a look at Eric Lindros taking a little oxygen because of the high altitude here, 1,400 meters. The Canadian team did some training at altitude, and even yet, at times you get a little short of breath and the odd burst of oxygen makes a player feel like he has a little bit more wind. The unified team back at full strength. Giles gives it to Plavsic. Plavsic plays it in off the boards, runs into Bouton. It's offside Canada with four minutes and 33 seconds remaining in a 1-0 game. Play just underway. Schlegel gives it across for Hines. Hines for Manderville. He dumps it in. Smith races back of the net. Zubak got there first for Boroshevsky. Boroshevsky for Bolden. Bolden over to Prokhorov. Prokhorov out front for Boroshevsky. Another shot they score. Bolden makes it 2 0. This has been a big line for the unified team. We remarked about it in. A number of different games. We also remarked about the emotion that these guys showed in practice before the Olympics and in scoring goals. A different team than what you've seen in the past, but these passing plays are the same. Prokhorov, Boroshevsky, and Bolden doing a great job throughout the tournament. And Bolden beats the outstretched glove and pad of Sean Burke off the post and in. Everything covered except a hair. Great execution by the unified team. You have to be impressed with the way they've managed to overcome adversity and continue to develop and improve their skills. A big smile by Igor Bolden and some good work by his two teammates, Boroshevsky and Prokhorov. 28-year-old Igor Bolden, one of the oldest members of this unified team, making it 2-0. Now it's Bikov circling, throwing it rink-wide. Amilev couldn't control it. Played around the boards and out. Three minutes and 30 and 46 seconds remaining in the game. It's 2-0. The unified team now leading Canada. Both goals in this second period. Butsayev and Bolden, the marksman. The unified team has done a tremendous amount of training. As you see, Viktor Tikhanov still stressing what he wants accomplished on the ice. These guys get together six weeks before the Olympics. I talked about 1,300 to 1,500 hours of practice time alone. Well, the conditioning, strength, and off-ice conditioning allow this team to be strong. And perhaps that's one of the reasons that their third periods are strong. Both goals for the unified team being scored in this third period of action. Stopped at the line, Petrenko puts it out to center ice. Giles is checked. Cannon leaves it there for the National Hockey League veteran with Minnesota and New York. Giles plays it off LeBeau down into the unified team zone. Petrenko can't pick up the pass at the line. Schlegel brings it back in. Schlegel. He slips it into the corner for LeBeau. He bumps with Yushkevich. Jamnov gets the puck, and he fires at the length of the ice. And it's an icing call against the unified team with two minutes and 55 seconds remaining. 
When you look back in this hockey game, the difference might be the inability of Canada to take advantage of power plays in the third period. Twice they had two-man advantages. 2-0, Two the unified team leading. Schlegel pinching in from the point. Juno throws it cross ice. Lindbergh has waited for seven games, but he just got a biggie. Lindbergh and Juno combining to bring this goal and allow Canada to come within one. Two one now. Two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the third period. And Chris Lindbergh has got to be happy after waiting seven games and hesitating on this play before he got good control to put it under Stolenkov. A great goal by Lindbergh. And this gives Canada another life. We saw Dave King getting his troops, trying to motivate them a little bit more on the bench. Down 2-0. Well, it's 2-1 now, and guys can believe that they still have a chance to come back and tie this hockey game before the third period ends. Juno and Woolley drawing the assists on Lindbergh's first goal of the Olympics. It comes at 17-20. 2-1, the unified team leading. All three goals in the third. Here comes Schreiber. Schreiber throws it in front. It bounced away from Woolley. At the point, Kurt Giles moving in. He shoots. It deflects to the side of the net. Schreiber leaving it there for Archibald. The unified team play it out to center ice. Malikoff picks up the shoot in. Throws it out to center. Hines has it. He gives it to Schlegel. The unified team protecting a one-goal lead, yet they still have two forwards high, depending on Malikoff to get the puck out, and he did. Good confidence in your defenseman, that's for sure, to have your forwards flying the zone in a gold medal game. Peacock, and across the line, continues to control it. Now he skates out to center ice. Peacock for Marana. Marana. Dumps it into the corner. A minute and 30 seconds remaining in the hockey game. Hobutov battling with Lindbergh behind the net. Lindbergh pokes it along the boards for LeBall. For Lindros, he tried a rink-wide pass. It's blocked. Picked up by Hobutov. Hobutov for Beacock. He shoots his goal! With one. Beekoff may have clinched the gold medal for the unified team. Watch this shot by Beekoff. He's not very big, but can he rifle the puck? Canada thought they had the zone cleared. And if this replay was further back, you would see that Homutov skated outside the blue line to negate what would have been an offside and then went in and passed it back to Beekoff. The unified team is so very dangerous. If you ever give them a turnover, they can generate a scoring opportunity. And after Canada got some life, here's a challenge to come back on a unified team with under two minutes remaining and down two goals. Vyacheslav Bikov has always been a favorite of coach Viktor Tikhanov. His stature will increase even more with that third goal. What a blast he fired past Sean Burke. Well, Tikhanov talked about the scoring and the attributes of Bikov and Homutov, but more importantly, he said that it's important to have guys that can make the atmosphere light in the dressing room and have fun. And as we've mentioned how the unified team is showing much more emotion, Viktor Tikhanov, I think, uncharacteristically doing the same thing in trying to generate emotion. I think the Canadian team was complaining that Homutov was offside, but he did come out to the blue line. Well, as you just saw, I was absolutely sure, as the replay, I think, shows, that Homutov went out of his way to have his feet come outside the blue line. Petrenko dishes it off. A shot by Kovalev. Kovalev is knocked down. Puck was blocked before it got to the net. And Joe Juno was hurt. Flipped up to the line. Burke comes out of the goal. The Canadian net is, it, net is empty. Kovalev for Petrenko. Petrenko was checked as he came in across the line. Picked up by Zhamnov. He can't shoot it. 35 seconds remaining. Archibald. Long shot. 
Flip to the corner. Yushkevich lays it off the glass. Not out. Kovalev flips it high. It goes out of play with 24 seconds remaining in the game. Sean Burke on the Canadian bench. Canada trailing in this gold medal game. 3-1. Well, down by a pair of goals. You don't see a very jubilant Canadian bench, even though the silver medal was guaranteed. But I think you can safely say that with this Canadian team, the whole was greater than the sum of the parts. These guys have not got a group of players that are the absolute best in their profession, but from what I've seen, they have played as a team as well as anybody and have done a great job in representing Canada. Very entertaining, great character, and represented the country very well. Let's see if they can get a pair in 24 seconds. The puck deflected down the ice, racing back after it is Jason Woolley. He was checked. The puck is loose. Jason Woolley slips it ahead for Archibald. Archibald tried to get it to Lindris. Intercepted. Beekoff throws it the length of the ice wide of the net. And that icing call comes with just six seconds remaining in the game. The face-off back in the unified team zone. Well, gold was the goal of Team Canada, but silver still ranks as a major achievement for the squad coached by Dave King participating in his third Olympic Games. Dave King has done an outstanding job along with Terry Crisp, Wayne Fleming and Dale Henwood. All the players and management have had a tremendous work ethic and that's witnessed by an outstanding silver medal. It's unfortunate that this game has gone to the Soviet Union or formerly the Soviet Union. It was an excellent hockey game and as we've said a number of times, the Canadian team was outstanding. And look at the jubilation. A rare show of emotion from the big red machine. Something you did not see in the past. And given the momentous events of the past few months in what used to be called the Soviet Union, I think Viktor Tikhonov might describe this Olympic win as Chudo na Ladu, Russian for Miracle on Ice. Now the unified team has gone through some tremendous changes. and. I think we knew that they had a talented team. I don't know if we knew that they could overcome this adversity. But in doing so, you have to take your hat off to them and appreciate the effort that each one of these players and Viktor Tikhonov has put in. No matter what, this Canadian team dared to dream. I was with Dave King and the coaching staff after they clinched the silver medal, and there were smiles all around. Well, they can still smile after this effort. Canada was absolutely outstanding. They were simply beaten by a team that has a little bit more talent. But as far as teams go, Canada ranks up there number one as far as I'm concerned and provided a very, very entertaining and outstanding effort in this gold medal game. Not only are the unified team members throwing their sticks up into the crowd, they are also firing their gloves and their helmets to the spectators here at the Maribel Ice Rink. A 3-1 gold medal win for the unified team over Team Canada. A completely different setup. The Canadian national team is the only full-time national team in the world. And when you look at the advancements that the national program has made since its inception in 1985-86, there can't be one person that is unhappy with what Canada has done here at the Olympics. Each and every player may not be remembered in eternity, but they can certainly be proud of the way they competed in the big games. A great job by Canada. Victor Tikhonov has now led the big red machine that we used to call the Soviet Union, now known as the unified team, to a third gold medal, the eighth overall gold medal that they have won in Olympic competition. And the medal presentations will take place. Czechoslovakia receiving the bronze, the Canadians the silver, and the unified team the gold. And it's interesting that all three medal teams came out of the B group of round robin competition. You know, when Dave King, the coach of the Canadian team, first saw the new format for the Olympic Games, he thought, we may only have to play the Soviet Union or the unified team and Czechoslovakia, two of the top European squads, once to get to a gold medal game. He was in the same pool as both teams. He got past Czechoslovakia in his quest for a gold. But in the championship game, 
could not defeat the unified team the second time they lost to this squad in the competition. There was a look at the gold medals that are a little different than what we've seen in the past. Gold surrounded surrounding crystal. They're very, very attractive. And much more than the attraction of the medal is the effort that goes into achieving one. Not a lot of people can say they've won an Olympic gold medal. Juan Antonio Samaranch, the president of the IOC, presenting the gold to Vyacheslav Bikov. It was his goal late in the third period that clinched this gold medal. Other members of the unified team skating forward to receive their gold medal. Since they entered Olympic competition in 1956, the Soviet Le Union and the unified team Le have a combined one loss record now of 62 wins, six losses, and just two ties. Well, from 1980 to 1984, Viktor Tikhonov did not lose one period of hockey. Hockey in the unified, and for the unified team will change now in that there'll be different divisions between what used to be the Soviet Union. In fact, there's already been changes in 1989. Viktor Tikhonov was no longer allowed to take whatever players he wanted for Red Army, and that has changed the balance of power in the Soviet Elite League, Dynamo Dynamo winning the last two national championships there. Silver medals being presented to Team Canada. Tremendous support for the Canadian squad throughout the Olympic Games. It increased as we drew closer to this gold medal game, and this morning, five bags of mail were delivered to the Canadian dressing room. I picked up the bags. There had to be over 100 pounds, and that is a Direct result of the work that this man has done. Dave King has spent countless hours, and I think of the time that he spent up here in scouting every possible game so that no matter what opponent, he and Terry Crisp, Wayne Fleming, and Dale Henwood would meet, there would be a book on them. And there's a look at the three assistant coaches, Wayne Fleming on the far end of your screen, Dale Henwood in the middle, and Terry Crisp closest to you. A great effort by all of these men, and as much as disappointment, I'm sure there's a fair amount of jubilation that brings on that emotion because they have to realize how much they've accomplished for Canada and for Hockey Canada and the Olympic hockey program. The coaching staff does not receive a medal. That honor is restricted to the players. Well, I like Terry Crisp's comment when we talked about not receiving a medal. The other guys were saying the memories are what's great, and Crispy said, I want a medal. I want to get a medal, <laughs> and I don't blame him one bit. Czechoslovakia finishing in third place. The teams that deadlocked in round robin play at the top of the Group B standings. The three teams that are present at the medal presentation. The unified team with the gold, Canada with the silver, and Czechoslovakia with the bronze. A scoreless hockey game through 40 minutes of play, and then early in the third, Butsayev at 101 from Davidoff, 1-0, the unified team. At 15.54, Bolden from Boroshevsky and Prokhorov made it 2-0. Lindbergh gave Canada renewed hope at 17.20 from Juno and Woolley, but at 18.51, Bikoff from Homutov made it a 3-1 final score and a gold medal for the unified team over Team Canada. Well, the Czechs are quite a story as well. People didn't think that they would be close to a medal round. The thought was that the Czechs could possibly be a team that might upset somebody. But as the tournament wore on, they got better and better and ended up really dominating the U.S. to 
come in and win the bronze medal. A great job for Czechoslovakia, particularly due to the fact that the World Championships are in Prague and Bratislava in 1992. And I'll tell you somebody else that will be at the World Championships, Dave King. His job's not done now. He's got a Japanese delegation coming to Calgary, and he'll be spending time with them, and then it's on to scouting for the World Championships. And back at hockey, the thing that he loves. The season began for this Canadian hockey team on August 19th in Lahti, Finland. Their first game en route to the Olympics here in Albertville. And while the players at the moment are dejected at the fact that they were unable to achieve their ultimate goal, they can still feel extremely proud that they are returning home with silver medals hanging from their necks. Well, you're absolutely right. I'll guarantee you that all the Canadians that followed the Olympic hockey team from the small towns that Ron Robertson spoke of to the larger centers, they can be proud of the job that Canada has done. And it wouldn't surprise me, Don, if there's a small crowd at the Calgary airport to give these guys a pat on the back for an excellent job here in Alberville and throughout this season. Not all of them, in fact, maybe none of them will be around in two years' time when Canada again tries to end the frustration that has existed since 1952 in Olympic competition. But with the performance of this hockey team in the Olympic Games of 1992, Canada's international hockey pride has been reborn. Eric Lindros will, in all likelihood, spend a couple extra days here in Alberville. He said, when it's over, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might get a little skiing. I don't have a team that I'm going to play for right away. Well, you were the Jean-Claude Keeley of these Olympic Games from a media standpoint. I think you <laughs> tested every one of the over 400 runs that are available in the Three Valleys area. And Eric Lindris was questioning you rather often as to the best area in which to ski. Oh, it's great to see the smiles on all the athletes' faces. For a very, very entertaining Olympic hockey tournament. And I think probably a fair medal placement for all three teams involved. The raising of the flags, the unified team standing as the Olympic rings are raised, signaling their gold medal win. Canada the silver, Czechoslovakia the bronze. to the unified team, silver to Canada, bronze to Czechoslovakia. And who knows what the next Olympic hockey competition in two years' time will bring from the tattered monolith that was once the Soviet Union. The unified team, the gold medalists of 1992. Okay, Brian, thank you very much. Eric, uh, your thoughts? I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, second's good, but it isn't the greatest. So. Nonetheless, uh, I think this was a great tournament for a, a Canadian team that's never won a medal in 24 years. Uh, it's a great comeback for the program, and, and you should feel good about your contribution in that regard, do you? I, I think we all feel good about our contribution. I just think that, you know, at times we, uh, we think we can do a little bit better, and, uh, and that's where it stands. I mean, uh, you know, Berkey sold out today, and uh, you know, a number of others sold out. I think all of us sold out, but uh, you just think that you can go a little bit further, and uh, maybe if you did, we, we wouldn't mind a one. One final thought. Tell me about Sean Burke and what he meant to you as you joined the program later on. Oh, I with Sean in Calgary with uh, with Leslie, um, his fiance out there, and it was a great uh, it was a great situation. It was uh, you know they they treated me like uh, you know part of the family I guess, and uh, we got along pretty good. And uh, you know, he's a solid goaltender, he's the best in the business, and uh, you know we're lucky to have him on our team. Thanks, sir. Keep it going, Sean. Come on in.